Hey guys, welcome back to The Poor Investor. So today, I will not be talking about crypto, um, even though the crypto market has been very, very shaky right now and there's so much to talk about because everything seems like it's a scam or it won't make it. Uh, Bitcoin, Chia, and all these other crypto coins and all these other exchanges that have been having problems, right? Um, is Chia actually having problems? I don't know. Let's not talk about that today. What I'm actually here to talk about today is a purchase that I made on Amazon and I'm still waiting for the delivery of it. But because of our advanced way of receiving readable content online, you have things like the Kindle and you have the Nook from Barnes and Noble. So what's my point today? I made a purchase. Well, not today. I actually made it uh, two days ago. Uh, ethical hacking book and it's like a guide so it's like a step-by-step -step guide i'm gonna show you guys right here um this is the book right it's a step-by-step -step guide on how to set up the lab environment and then you just go through this whole crash course of understanding how to do ethical hacking like sort of like a pen test now these are things that actually interest me just as much as certain crypto projects and uh, we'll just read here a, a little quick you know synopsis of what's this entitles or, or what's included in this book uh so do you actually get a, a better understanding of it so here uh deploying the metasploit frameworks reverse shell and then embedding them into innocent seeming files capturing passwords in corporate windows network using mimicats mimicats all right i've used mimicats in the past scanning almost every device on the internet to find potential victims Installing Linux root kits that modifies a victim's operating system. Performing performing advanced cross script uh, cross site scripting, which is uh, abbreviated XSS, attacks that execute sophisticated JavaScript payloads. Now, I've read similar ethical hacking books in the past, and obviously with times have changing, you know, you try to kind of keep up to date with these uh new tools or whether they're outdated tools and then they've been updated or just the process of it and um so i was just going through it and i was finding it to be a little more intriguing uh this was published back in 2021 so it is getting dated as each day passes by but the fact that it's been out since 2021 and we're in 2022 getting into 2023 some of these tools may be you know going out of date or whatever it is i even noticed that even in the uh demo uh and i say demo is when you go into this right you can actually start your if you decide to purchase this let me just go back to the, the beginning of it so there's the glossary you can actually it goes through the steps on setting up you know like virtual box which is free right unless you have vmware or whatever and you can set all that up and it, it, it'll guide you on how to actually download, you know, the uh, the OSs for the environment that they want you to build. So let's go through it really briefly right now. And each chapter it explains what each chapter in, you know, goes through it in details. So here's what I did setting up. This is what I did. So PF Sense virtual machine and open source router firewall to protect the vulnerability virtual machines from outside hackers. So you set that one up and then you have Kali Linux, which is a virtual machine, the machine that contains the hacking tools discussed in this book, which is very, very popular uh, Two Ubuntu Linux desktop virtual machines that will use to demonstrate attacks on desktop laptops environment and Metasploit virtual machine, the machine that will use to demonstrate attacks on a Linux server. And here is the virtual lab diagram that they're wanting you to set up, which I have already done because I have my entire, entire uh, virtual box environment. And I'll show you guys really quickly if I can find it here, uh, virtual box. So you see there, uh, ignore these two, please. Uh, PF Sense. Metasploit, Kali Linux, and Ubuntu. So I have all that running. Very, very minimal resources. All right. We're talking about like, you know, I believe, uh, let's just say 
Uh, I should have just used that one for a video memory is like 16 megabytes base memory. I have two uh, 2000 megabytes uh, for the base memory on the Ubuntu machine. So this is a very minimal machine. You're not going to be processing anything intense on any of these machine. The Kali Linux machine, uh, all these were set by default. Now, the Kali Linux one, and I believe I, uh, I think the Kali Linux and the Metasploit were actual files that were pre-loaded that you didn't actually have to install from scratch, like the Ubuntu. All right, and the PFSense was also an ISO image that you would download, but then you go through the installation. But the Kali Linux and the Metasploit are just uh, files that were pre-loaded, so you kind of just open up VirtualBox and then you just load the operating system and and it had default configs see it right right here processors too i didn't set that it you know acquired it from the actual i believe uh, it's the ova files all right so there you have it i have the machines all set up right let me just uh bring this over so you see here i have the kali linux and i have the pf sense so i'm just going through the whole lab situation this is one of the ubuntu machines that i have and this is the metasploit uh metasploit kind of timed out so there you go it's all configured i was successful in doing that so it'll ask you to you know actually it'll walk you through in setting up the virtual box which is pretty cool and then step by step you just follow this and you know if you want to get into this now this is not like um very advanced in the beginning uh, but although it can get to that point of being very advanced because in order to get advanced, you need to start with the baby steps. So this is the baby steps, right? Uh, PF Sense, I actually didn't even know what PF Sense was until I looked into this book. So I learned something new. But Kali Linux, Ubuntu, Metasploit, I worked and I've, you know, I've used it in the past. But PF Sense, I have never touched before. So I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. I didn't even know this existed. And uh, you probably... You know, if you're into this, you know, uh, I guess ethical hacking, or you can actually use it for non-ethical hacking too. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm in the business of this, and I find it really intriguing. This is what in intrigues me, motivates me, keeps me going. Uh, it's sort of like a hobby. It's like a game, like puzzle pieces, right? You're oh, playing chess. This is like chess. You're you're trying to, you know, self. I don't want to say the word penetrate because some people just get really childish and um so <laughs> so a lot of this is you know you can mimic a situation and you can learn a lot from the real world uh even in a test environment this is how it's done in the real world how someone can be tricked or fooled or trying to um you know get into a system so many things to learn so many things to do and this book no joke on the kindle version is 29 dollars 99 uh, i'm not in any way affiliated with this i'm just saying in a in a short and easy way to learn this type of thing for the price that you pay i think i paid like 27 dollars uh, one of the sellers was selling it for like 27 dollars uh i i bought it new though uh, this is these are used uh, even used were 27 so can you imagine I was paying uh, and I don't think I see it here anymore or maybe I paid 29 I don't remember but I, I don't think it was that expensive uh, for what you can learn on purchasing this book right so that's pretty much it I wanted to come here and just tell you guys you know what I've been doing because you know some guys have been uh, some of my subscribers have been asking me, like, oh, what, what happened to your videos? Why aren't you, like, on YouTube? Is there something going on? No, I'm, I've just been really busy. I actually went over to Best Buy yesterday to pick up more NVMEs. Uh, this is a one terabyte, and I just want to set up another lab system that I have. You know, I have all the, the fixings on it, but it was running on a SSD, and I just wanted something a little faster, so I bought an uh, NVMe card and the plugging in one terabyte 
I will be doing that and then reloading another OS just for a lab environment. That's that's pretty much what I've been doing. So let me know in the comments below if this is something that interests you. And I'll probably I would do more videos because I, I you know, I sit here and I'm going through all this stuff. I'm like, oh, man, should I do a video? But then, you know, I kind of doubt that my subscribers will be interested in things like this. But you know what? You guys let me know. All right. I want to thank you guys for being here. And I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.